So I'm going to try to give you some answers. Actually, I will give you no answers, just food for thoughts. Um, the first thing is, uh, in, the, in the coming years, we're going to be in what we call the E3. AI will be on everything, everywhere, available to everyone. And that means that if you look at who's going to lead this race, there will be countries and companies who have the E3, and there will be countries and companies who don't have it. And the issue for them will be that they might not have the right to operate anymore. And I think this is something that is very important. I think we, we start to understand it across the world. I think COGEX is about this. Um, but the real topic is there may be companies in the next five years that will not have any more rights to operate because they have not understood what's happening uh, on AI. So I was, I'm often asked, which country will be the winning countries? The first topic is you need to have data availability. And there's a big debate, and I was with uh, Kai Fuli last week in San Francisco, which is, is GDPR a good thing or a bad thing? I think it's a good thing. He keeps saying it's a bad thing. We talked last week, he would agree that it's not a, such a bad thing. So GDPR might be a turning, page, a turning point for Europe. The second topic is mathematical capabilities. At the end of the day, artificial intelligence is a new name for mathematics. And I think that once you know this, you have a different way of looking at uh, AI. The third point is investment power. How much money will be invested by countries and VCs in the different companies and in different countries? That will be very, very key for knowing which is going to win the, the race. Number four is applied mathematics. Because at the end, mathematics, pure mathematics, is totally useless if you don't apply it to some special cases. And that's something that you've seen with uh, Sense Time before and some other speakers. That will make a big difference. Last but not least is ability to go beyond machine learning. Machine learning, as you know, is something that was developed in the 60s. So we're using the immense power of processing. We're using data. But at the end of the day, we have not yet found the breakthrough. I think that Eric Johnson was saying that uh, his daughter is uh, recognizing a cat after two, two times. And today we are um, training machines as uh, if we are sitting in a chair and watching one million pictures of a cat. And I think this is something that's changed. And last but not least, and I'll come back to this in a second, is the number of companies that will apply it. Because today, even though there's a lot of hype, very few companies are applying it. So let's talk about China for a minute. China has a unique position to win this race. And you can see some numbers here. The number of handset, 782 million handset. You know, uh, mobile payment, surveillance camera, close to 600 million very soon. This is ma a ma massive competitive advantage. The second thing about China is... Shit, sorry, sorry. Today, it's close to 60% of the global AI investment in the last five years. 60% of the world investment were made in China. And that's going to be a big challenge. And also, the industry is growing very fast. The Chinese government is putting policies. They're working on the customer side, both from the public sector demand and the consumer demand. They're working on the national strategy. And if you look at the numbers, they are mind-boggling. And last but not least, they're giving government guidance funds, which are deploying money across the board. When we look at... Sorry, oops. When we look at how fast the companies are developing, you saw the CEO of SenseTime, um, 14 AI unicorns. This is the old numbers. Uh, all these numbers have in increased in the last month. This is the number from last year. Let's not forget some other countries. France, of course. France has a complete advantage of having all these mathematicians. Russia, as you know, Putin made this statement, which I think was very interesting, which is, whoever controls AI controls the world, and it's a weapon. But this has been a lot of talks. This is what he, did. he said uh, two years ago. And I, maybe you have seen that he's uh, launching an AI strategy for the industry in Russia. It was uh, announced last week. Of course, let's not forget about Germany, but Germany is only investing $3 billion. $3 billion compared to the trade balance is nothing, uh, compared to the French $1.5 billion. And of course, the UK, where we are, is also setting up a, a strategy. So the rest is on. 
a few uh, food for thoughts. Portable AI. So we're entering what I call the fourth revolution. The, the wave one was basically the computer uh, and the software. This the rest was won by IBM and uh, Microsoft. And then uh, when we move into the mobile phone, smartphone, now imagine a world where Microsoft distributes Windows for free to all the mobile phones. I mean, if we have Android today, it's because they let it happen. The probability that Android uh, exists is one in a billion because there was no way if you had been with a license from Microsoft on your computer and they give it for free on your mobile phone, there is no space for Android. It's just because the business model of the first wave where mostly you buy a license and they sell you another license. The model of the smartphone has been a, a business model of free and this is what they propose with Android. The next wave will be completely different because, as I wrote in my latest book, which is in French and uh, Chinese and English soon, because we're going to move into the portable AI world. So what is the future? I mean, AI, and I think everyone would agree at COGEX, AI will become a commodity. Machine will be able to recognize, they will be able to do NPL, they will be able to interact with humans. This is going to become a commodity. We will move into more decentralized. I think that it was in the, the previous panel that people said that we are in a very centralized world. It will be decentralized to the, to the machines. Less data-driven, because once we have taught the machine how to recognize a human, a car, how to interact, there's no need for training. It will be a marginal training. I mean, who cares about knowing what kind of food you were eating when you were 15 years old? All this data is the past. So we will just processing the data of, of, of data that we will produce. And last but not least, I call it the 00111, is today we have screen and we're interacting with machines. So basically it's a human to a machine, to a machine to a human. In the world of tomorrow, we don't need the screens. The machine will operate for us and NPL will be everywhere. So portable AI, what is it? And I wrote it here. It's available 24 hours 7. It's working for you with your own personal data. And I'm using two images for those of you to, for, to visualize, it's either Jiminy Cricket from Pinocchio for people who are more in the 40s, 1940s, or Joy from um, Blade Runner 2048 for people who are more in the 40s, but 2040s. Um, so you can imagine that with this, it will change, uh, that we will have a combination of our intelligence with an artificial intelligence and the ability for us to retake control of our life. You know, back in 2000, uh, I was told, someone showing me a phone, it was long, long before uh, Steve Jobs, that this, was the, this would become the remote control of our life. In your pockets, you have all a remote control of your life. You don't have the control of your life. The data is not in your pocket, even though you think it is. The service you're re receiving is not in your pocket, even though you think it is. And in the, in the world of portable AI, you will have all this in hand. What does it mean? It, it will mean a change in the relationship we have with, um, with the GAFAs. And I'll come back to this in a second. So, but today it's going very, very slowly. You know, this is on the, on the left side, and uh, the number of companies mentioning AI in earning calls. And on the right side, you have the number of companies that are really applying. So one of the challenges that the startups in this room and elsewhere, and we have some startups in this room, are facing is that the company they deal, they're dealing with, are talking, the big ones, are talking a lot about AI, but not applying it, and I'll come back to this in a second. The second thing is, if you look at uh, where we're heading, uh, there are a few portable AI initiatives. Uh, I think that uh, Google will announce something very soon. Uh, They're ramping up to a quite large number of engineers working on the topic. But again, do you want to have the portable AI from Google? I'm not sure, uh, because it will be still the remote control of your life. Um, and you can see that one of the next big things will be the uh, voice recognition to move from the big fingers on the screen to our ability to, to give a direct uh, instruction. I move on because uh, I, I'm trying to cover before the panel. Um, the second topic is what are the GAFA doing? Are they going to win this race? If you look from one angle, once you have portable AI, a lot of things will be more difficult for them. The first thing which will be very difficult for them is that most of their source of revenues is coming from things that are linked to the remote control of our life. But once advertising disappears, because with the one and zero, your portable AI is just going through the website, 
scanning the website, looking at all the SKU, looking at the size of your shoes, and then just going through. Uh, who has not been uh, going to a website and at the end finding out that the SKU, I mean, your size is not available? This will not happen again. So if you think about a possible AI, that will change the revenue stream, advertising, the revenue stream of the platform. It will also mean uh, that Amazon might become like a big upper market of the past. Bear with me a second. Why do we use Amazon? The same reason we went to an upper market in the 70s and 80s. Because we are taking a car, which is not a car, it's a mobile device, to arrive in one place where we can find everything and we save a lot of time. Imagine a world when time is infinite because your portable AI is able to go to every single website and buy all the pieces apart from each other. And in this world, you will be able to uh, do what exactly happened in the real world for upper markets, to go back to smaller formats that are more catered and curated to your needs. The other thing which is quite interesting, and we can spend time in the panel after, is that at the end of the day, the GAFAM and BAT are using basic machine learning. So sometimes we think they're doing you know, breakthrough things. What they're doing is extremely basic. They just have tons of data. I was discussing with Eric uh, Johnson just before. He's doing some work with uh, Amazon every year. They send some pieces of data, and every time he finds millions of dollars of savings and improvements. Why? Because they have so much data that just applying the basic machine learning is yielding a lot of results. They also are buying companies in order to keep in the rest. So what does it mean for the normal companies? Are they going to win the rest? Are they going to lose the rest? Normal companies, today, they are surrounded by what I call four types of challenges. They are surrounded by the platform of the GAFAs. They're surrounded by the startups who are no longer their friends because most of the startups are trying to disrupt them. And they are surrounded by an enemy which is inside called the IT department. Unfortunately, they have big legacy system. They cannot move into uh, agile uh, programming. By the way, we worked, I work with large corporations trying to move into agile programming. It's a disaster because no one is documenting any line of code. And the legacy costs are among us. So this is a challenge for large companies. But if you think about the portable AI, it will change the game. Because if the consumers, if the citizen, can use portable AI to go directly to the corporate and to buy the products. You know, it will impact the platform, the GAFAM, the startup will be challenges, challenge, sorry, and then the IT department will have their own portable AI, and I think we will move away from a lot of ERP systems. So my advice is for traditional companies to copy the GAFAM, to implement some basic stuff, one of the challenges we see with clients is that they are afraid of implementing AI because they think it's uh, scary, it's black boxes. I think one of the recommendations I'm making if you want to win the rest, if you want to be part of the E3, is to start with small things but really do them seriously. Use machine learning in a basic way. We also will enter an era of uh, what we called, I call, human augmented intelligence. Because with a portable AI, you will have augmented employees. You will have augmented customers. And that will be a big thing because today, in this room, you are not augmented. If you are looking with your remote control of your life for the best Parmesan cheese, I can, and you go on a, I will not, one of the GAFA, a BAT, you will not get the best Parmesan cheese. You will get the one who paid the most to be on the top of the line on the first page. So if you want to buy the best Parmesan cheese, you need to call your friends. I think if you protect yourself in the future with portable AI, with the next wave, your portable AI will check with some of the friends and there will not be any cost associated with it. I mean, when you ask your friends what wine I should buy for dinner, he's not charging you any uh, money and he's not, uh, the wine um, uh, distributor is not getting, giving him any margin. Last but not least, and I think it's a big thing in our world, is the augmented citizen. Today, you know, with all this uh, fake news, it's very difficult for all of us, for citizens, to know what is true, what is not true. You're getting news on your remote control of your life, which nobody is checking. Referring back to Joy and Pinocchio, 
a joy and sorry and Jiminy Cricket. Jiminy Cricket and Joy gave a lot of advice to Blade Runner and to uh, Pinocchio. He may not have followed them because sometimes he gets into trouble, but at the end of the day, he's changing the relationship uh, of what's being provided to you. So I wanted to cover a lot of topics. I was asked who is winning the race. Uh, as a conclusion, I wanted to share with you three quotes. The first one is from Jeff Bezos. Uh, I think that machine learning, he's talking about AI, but machine learning is the first basic that will transform a lot of things we're doing. And a lot of people are using AI, but I think we should really focus on the basic things. The second thing, and I love this one, is if someone is talking to, about AI, it is likely to be in a PowerPoint. If someone is looking about, talking about um, Python, it's likely to be uh, uh, the real thing. And I think that we, and I see as investor, a lot of uh, PPT rather than uh, real things. Last but not least, and I think it was something we have to discuss as we talk about who will be leading the race, is if we let the machine manage us, uh, they will treat us very badly. So as a conclusion, whatever you think after this keynote, I'm encouraging you to start owning the future today. Thank you very much.